There you go. My name is Teresa and I do archaeology and I study uh, material remains of ancient peoples. And what is archaeology? Archaeology is studying the material remains of ancient people. <laughs> Now I don't find the perfect ending. So what do you want from me? That's what it is. Come on. <laughs> Who else wants to share it? <laughs> really? You guys are going to point at each other? That's, that's how y'all going to do me? Y'all going to point at each other? Her. She going she gonna to say it. <laughs> oh Look at her saunter. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. Oh wait, I'm not even ready. Wait. <laughs> you get edited, right? Yes. The sad thing is, is that you know that they're undergrads, so you know what level of understanding they have of what you're gonna but, say. So what anyway, I, what am I saying? So you guys are worried about saying something. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> You're just going to give them the definition of your field. What do you do? Yeah. Let's see. I'm a bioarchaeologist. Heavy on the bio. <laughs> <laughs> the bio class would be like, okay. Okay, no, seriously. okay I'm a bioarchaeologist, and what I do is study ancient human remains and look at the different um, indications of stress, occupation, health, disease, trauma. That sounds cool. Teresa. Now don't make me ask you how is it how is it different than paleoanthropology? I'm hell. Yes. Woo! Shelly. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hello world, my name is Angel Gonzalez Lopez, I come from Mexico, I'm an archaeologist, that means to me, I am studying ancient societies from Mexico City, and I'm studying religion and iconography, but I don't know what does it mean precisely, but <laughs> I think it's the study of symbols in Aztec stone sculpture. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come on, no cultural anthro people. What about a specific bio? No, she didn't. She did bio arc, sis. Come on now. I'm missing a cultural folk and a biological folk. We'll, we'll let them read that. They can read that. They can read that. See the pressure mounting? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> you just give your definition of cultural anthropology. What is cultural anthropology? Um. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, they're not cultural anthropologists, so they don't have to know. Okay, let's see. Throw in some modern contemporary. <laughs> Thanks for ruining no. ruining the students. Everyone's okay, ready. Shelly. <laughs> okay, is it going? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm a cultural anthropologist. Um, you can study basically anything to do with culture and people. You can study how they're the same or how they're different and. That's basically it. What are the things about culture? Uh, some things are like religion or um, I, I study social media and I link it to writing. So it could be anything. Thank you. <laughs> Seashells, that was good. All inspiring. I'm so glad I have a diverse cohort. What would I have done if I was a second year? It'd be split, huh? I don't know what I would do. You're the worst. Elizabeth! Not my sister. Come on now. <laughs> don't ever want that flow. <laughs> you guys don't even know how much you this is. Don't! 
Don't you know what this is? Consider no, no, no. Yes, put your hair down. Consider no, no, no. Consider this is Ryer's class. Okay, this is Ryer's class. Okay, you ready? Go for it. <laughs> this is Ryer's class, and it's nothing but cultural folks talking about there is no biology. Biology God. is cultural. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm a biological anthropologist. Um, I study human behavior and biology, as well as non-human primates. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's all you want to share about biological <laughs> anthro. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> Tell them what you're studying. That's cool. Okay, I study human behavior through hormones, like human sexuality and why people mate the way they do. See, interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth, baby sis. With the hair down. Uh. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> if you want me to, I will have them do it. <laughs> All right, now I have to do my lecture. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Have a good night. So as you guys can see, that was my cohort at UC Riverside in anthropology, a diverse bunch of crazy folks, but hopefully you sort of get the gist of what anthropology can do. There are four fields to anthropology that we actually talk about in the book, and that is linguistic anthropology, and that talks about the different language structures, the way people actually communicate, tells you a lot about their culture when you look at things like symbolism. I always tell people when we get to the living section, you know how influential language is when a culture doesn't even have a word for a particular thing we think is common. And you tend to ignore those differences, but technically it tells you a lot, like, Maybe that particular animal or thing doesn't exist in their culture. And then you start to thinking about those kind of things. Like, where were their horses? Would there be a word for horse in that culture? Exactly. So language tells us a lot about a culture. The other thing we have is archaeology. You see, we have actually three archaeologists in the group. And they study material remains. Now, by material remains, we mean physically. They're the people you see in the movies. The Indiana Joneses, the mummies, they are diggers. You can't be an archaeologist if you don't like to dig. And I can tell you, we may go on a dig this semester. So when I put that option out there and you want to go, let us know. You can ride with us. We go to Barstow, get up 7 a.m., drive out there, dig for the day, come back. And sometimes students find things, and sometimes they don't, but it's fun. At least, hey, when in your lifetime are you going to say that you actually went on an archaeological dig? That's what I'm saying. So they actually do it. And you see Angel, he's an archaeologist from Mexico. So he works predominantly in central Mexico with his work. And he looks more at, I don't think he actually finds bones. So there'll be a difference when, when we talk about it between fossil remains and actual material remains. So sometimes you're not always going to find burial sites where there are bones. And that's what he looks for. He looks for these actual artifacts because they tell you something about the culture, how they made pottery, um, where things are. In Egypt, a lot of the information we know about who was buried versus who actually built the temples is because of archaeology, because you can uncover these whole cities and towns around the actual pyramid. And then it shows you the class structure. Then you also have the fossilized thing, which is what Karima was telling you about bioarchaeology. And she looks specifically at how the wear and tear of bones tells you a little bit about what people were doing. So if you find the bones of an eight-year-old, and you know we do have certain periods of growth, so you can pretty much determine the age range of an individual when you find the actual remains and they haven't dissipated. <clears throat> then you start to look for wear and tear where you might see things like arthritis or breaking of bones. If you see the tendons start to repair, you know they've lived long enough for healing to occur. Those kind of things tell you about what the people actually did. And that's what she studies. Pretty cool, huh? Now, my sis Elizabeth, 
she um, studies bio stuff. And so you can go a lot, you can go anywhere with bio, as you'll see those of you guys who are in bio class. You can go anywhere with bio if it has to do with humans. You can do present living humans, you can do past living humans. And actually, the way our class looks is kind of how it would look in the field if you were doing archaeology or biological anthropology, because you would take primatologists, people who know primates, you would take osteologists, people who know bones. Everyone would go in the field, pay Paleoanthropologists, people who study early humans, we all would go out in the field and work together. Uh, you would even have to take paleontologists, people who know dinosaur bones, because you need to be able to distinguish what kind of bones you find. Everyone's needed in the field. Anthropology, if it has to do with humans, then we have to do with it. Sort of like what Shelley told you, the way humans behave and perform their culture. That is cultural anthropology. Anything can go into cultural anthropology. Anything from language to food to practices of belief systems to uh, clothes, how people dress themselves, how people congregate, how they actually explore communication. These are things in the cultural class you'll actually get to see, and those are things we will focus on in South L.A., what are the cultures that exist in South L.A.? Quite interesting to think of, right? I know sometimes when we think of culture, we think of race, right? We get to the black, Latino, white. Wait, do we actually even count other people in L.A.? Isn't that interesting <clears throat> how demographics matter, right? You might say Asians exist, but way far away. They're not in South L.A. So those things are quite interesting, and that's what we want to capture in the cultural anthropology class. I know this painting behind me looks kind of creepy, isn't it? My advisor is always like, what the hell is that? I know. I think it's like a portrait from India with dead people. It's bananas, right? <clears throat> so, I don't know. This is just the classroom we're in. I don't know what to tell you about these folks. Um, but I am now considered a medical anthropologist, which is weird whatever. I usually call it a biocultural concoction. But many people just call it medical anthropology. And essentially what we do is we study health and illness and disease in cultures. So we do look at things like genes and behaviors related to health. Um, it is a field related to public health, except public health deals more in actually identifying what is occurring that's causing people um, health on a public dishealth or disease on a public level. Anthropologists don't seek to um, just identify. We seek to understand why it's occurring. So public health would have been the domain that told you that so many people who had lung cancer also smoke cigarettes. But anthropology would be the domain that explains to you that there's different mediating circumstances, like cigarettes are usually up front at the liquor store, and when you come home from a hard day of work, it's right in front of your face, and it's easy for you to sort of dabble in either the candy or the tobacco in front of you, or that there's misuses of tobacco that many cultures actually use tobacco and didn't have incidences of cancer, but that there's other things that are being added, like the nicotine and all these other things that cause health problems. Like, that's what a cultural anthropologist um, particularly a medical anthropologist would end up doing. So I'm a medical anthropologist, and my research is now on African Americans. It didn't used to be. It used to be on El Salvador. They made me change my research, folks. Oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Don't give me a headache. But I hope this actually lets you know a little bit about what anthropology is. But remember, theology means study of. So whenever you have that in the topic, you just know. Whatever's in front of it tells you what it's the study of. And for us, it's anthropo. Anthropo means man, as in human. Okay, so this is the study of humans. If it has to do with humans, it has to do with anthropology. And I can guarantee you, after 100 years of having anthropology, actually some people would date it older than that, we have definitely studied everything that has to do with humans. So... I hope this helps you a little bit understand what you're getting yourselves into, you poor babies. All right. Well, I will see you later. I'm about to go take a nap and then go to West African class because a girl needs her little workout on. All right. Take care. Get your discussion done. All right. Bye.